Today we're going to answer the question, can you build muscle without getting fat? I think there's a very simple way for anyone out there right now to do this without it getting too confusing. Because you know I like to keep this part of it simple. Yeah. I do think that diet can be very, very simple. And I call it the 12-15 rule. Okay, you know what that means, Jesse? I don't. <laughs> All right, so what that means is take a look in the mirror right now and assess what your fitness level is in terms of your, your body composition. What is your body fat level? If you can see abs, right? You can see the outline of abs. You can see maybe even more defined abs. You're obviously not high, as high in body fat levels as people that can't. So what I say is the 15 people, the people that have abs, they start here. I'll clarify in a second. The people that can't see their abs at all right now, they start over here. Now what that means, I need your help with this, Jesse. Okay. Take out your phone. Yep. Calculator. Now what that means is, let's say this person over here, the, the person that can see his abs is 170 pounds. Yep. You're gonna multiply the body weight of 170 times 15. That equals 2,550. So 2,550, okay, cool. Now the person that can't see their abs, we're gonna go a little bit lower on that factor number over here. So that, let's say they're a 200 pound person. Okay. You multiply that by 12. 2,400. 2,400. Okay, so that is the attempt that we're going to make, the rough attempt, and it's totally fine, the rough attempt here to make at getting to a baseline level. Now you have to experiment. Okay. You just got to start eating at this level. Use your calorie calculators, your apps, whatever you're doing to factor in each thing that you're eating, and try to see what you are, if you can maintain this level, and see how you do. How long do you do this for? About two weeks. Okay. Okay, if you do this for two weeks, you start to monitor whether or not you're gaining weight or losing weight. Right, so let's say you're not, you're staying right at the same level, then you're probably pretty accurate at that number. If you find that when you're doing this, you're losing weight, then you wanna add about 10% of the calories. So in this case, it's an extra 255 calories, mm -hmm. right? Add that and see if you can do that for two weeks and see where you're at, see if you can level off. If you're gaining too much weight, right, you're seeing body fat accumulation, right. then you wanna take 10% off of the number, all right? And then you, you take that off and then you eat at that level and see if you can maintain or steady out that weight. Right? Pretty simple so yeah, far? easy. Okay, there's one extremely important thing that you need to do at this step. This is where people screw this up all the time. You have to understand that during this trial period, you should attempt to eat very similar the entire time mm -hmm. to get a really accurate baseline. Right. Because two different things happen. Let's say you have your steak that you cook at home mm -hmm. versus the steak that you have at Applebee's. Oof. There's gonna be a difference. Even though you're gonna go into your app, right, and say, oh, I had steak. You did at Applebee's that was like 1,800 calories versus the one you had at home that was like 400, 600 calories. Like there's a, there's a difference in how they prepare the steak and you're not necessarily aware of all the extra calories that are there. So you could be putting in the same type of food but getting very different numbers that are thrown off your baseline because right. when you first calculated it, you were eating at home and when you started to do the trial period, you are eating somewhere else or you're eating out a lot, right? You don't want to do that. The other thing is the types of foods that you're eating. If your macros shift a lot during your trial period, that has an effect too. Because we know there's something called the TEF, which I'm gonna cover here later, it's extremely important. The thermic effect of food. Protein has a higher cost of metabolism than carbs and fats. So if all of a sudden during your trial period, you're still eating the same amount of calories, but you've shifted to a lot more protein, you're gonna see a different net effect during that time. So again, you're being thrown off because you're just calculating the, the intake without being aware of what actually is happening in the backside that could actually be changing those numbers around. Right. Okay? So that's good. Now, what do we do? Now we need to thank you, Jesse. Gotcha. Now we need to look and see how aggressive do you want to be in terms of the amount of muscle that you're building, how fast you want to build it, and how tolerant are you of putting on body fat? Okay. Now I have to make a confession. I don't like putting on body fat. I never did. I had different goals. I didn't care that it would take me longer to build muscle as long as I could stay lean because I realized that it's a slower process. But ultimately, I think it's worked out well for me. Yeah. For you, you also had a similar goal. You didn't yeah. want to be... I didn't want to be fat at all. I wanted to stay lean and have my abs showing and everything like that. I also wanted to be athletic and move well and yeah. feel well. So people go through this process when they bulk where they're okay with adding additional body fat because they figure they'll just take it off later. And that's fine. Let's discuss that because it's very important. You have to ask that question. So this is sort of our caloric maintenance level now that we calculated. 
how quickly, again, and how much tolerance do you have for that body fat? Because the higher you go up this way, the more you're gonna have to deal with body fat accumulation. So let's say you're at like a 100 calorie surplus. You can expect that you're going to put on some muscle, but again, it's gonna take longer, right? Let's yeah. just leave it at that for now. You can also get a little bit more aggressive and go up to, let's say, a 300 calorie surplus, okay? okay. In which case, you're gonna do a little bit more. You can even go up to a 500 calorie surplus on a daily basis. Starts to get a little bit more aggressive. Now, here's what we know about these levels. Again, in rough numbers. We know that when you're at this level here, about 60 or 40 or 50, 50, the composition of what you're adding to the weight gained is 50% body fat and 50% muscle gain. Okay. Okay. At this level here, you're sort of more around 70, 30 favoring lean muscle growth, right? So you're got 30% body fat that you're adding to the total weight gained and yet 70% of the weight coming from muscle. Mm -hmm. And at this level here, you're more like 90, 10. So that makes sense, right? The, like the, the more calories you're taking in, yeah. the, the more of that's gonna come in the form of body fat. And again, that's why I said your tolerance for adding some fat while you're bulking up is gonna be tested. Yeah, as okay. well as your goals too, because if you don't wanna get fat, you'd wanna be towards the lower end, right? Yeah, but again, gonna take more time. Yeah. That's just being totally fair, right, and honest. Now, let's say you're gaining eight pounds of muscle here, or I'm sorry, eight pounds of weight there, you're gaining five pounds of weight here, and you're gaining two pounds of weight here, right? They, they see this and go, well, this is cool, man. I want to gain 20 pounds. How do I do that? Just eat more. Keep going, 1,000 yeah. calorie surplus, 1,500 calorie surplus. There's a max amount of muscle tissue that you can build. So this doesn't just keep going at this level, stay 50-50 all the way up. You just start to get less and less muscle tissue contributing to the overall weight gain. Because think about what's required. This isn't just a magic formula of eating builds muscle. What else do you have to do? Good question. Work out. Ah. You gotta train, Jesse. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta train, you gotta train smart, okay? Yeah. You have to stimulate the muscle. You have to perform a workout. You have to recover from that workout. You have to stimulate again. Like, there, there is no speeding up the amount of muscle tissue simply by cramming more and more food down your throat. Right. There's a point of diminishing returns, all right? So we know that you can't just keep going down that path. Mm -hmm. All right, what would happen if you, make, if you calculate these out? The eight pound weight gain amounts to four pounds of muscle. The five pound weight gain amounts to 70% of it being muscle is 3.5 pounds. The 100 calorie surplus, the two pound weight gain, comes out to be actually 1.8 pounds. Now, I ask you and I ask you, what's the difference between this and this? It's a half a pound of muscle. Maybe we'll even call it a pound. Yeah. But there's also a four pound body fat accumulation here in a one and a half pound body fat accumulation here. Right. You'll see the difference. You'll definitely see the difference. And how capable, first of all, how tolerant are you of that look? Mm -hmm. And how capable are you of understanding that that is gonna have to come off at some point? And the methods you're using to increase your calories might become a little bit to your liking. Yeah, the right? perpetual bulk. The perpetual bulk, I like to say. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you're not finding it as easy to cut the weight off. There's, there's people that get stuck in the perpetual bulk yeah. because they are not as disciplined as they should be. Or they get addicted to food. Or, yeah, I mean, that, that's an extreme example, but like your commitment and dedication to what you're doing here, you have to be locked in to be able to handle that. That's why a lot of professional bodybuilders can do high degrees of bulking, but still cut back down because they've got the discipline to be able to come back. Right. A lot of the average lifters out there, right, we don't have that. Yeah. We don't have the ability to go out there and just, just all of a sudden start losing weight and cutting back to where we were. Yeah. So you have to be careful going down that road. So I always recommend, again, for the difference between these two, it's modest. And I would say you're better off on the, on the lower end over here, mm -hmm. right? And again, you can even be further lower end. You obviously did this yourself. Yeah, um, I was in a slight surplus. Just I added an extra shake at night before bed. Um, I was so I'm showing some pictures, by the way, here of like, this is Jesse, like the skinny, skinny Jesse to the point where he added a lot, a lot more muscle. Yeah. yeah, never, never in between getting fat. No, that, that was one of the things about it was I took a slow approach to it. Um, really? Then, a lot of people haven't reminded you that it was slow? Oh, apparently <laughs> you can get my gains in, in three months. Right. That's, that's what I've been hearing. And I was in around, I was calculating uh, around what, a 200 plus, a 200 sur calorie surplus. Uh -huh. um, well, you just had like one, that one extra shake. That one extra having. shake. So. Here's another very important point, all right? Now, 
it's not just the number of the calories that you take in, this number here, this, or this, okay? 100, 300, 500. Because I mentioned before the thermic effect of food. Yeah. What happens with that? You do have to account for this. People don't account for this. There's a difference in the metabolic cost to digest protein versus carbohydrates versus fats. Yeah. Okay? What we know about that is that when it comes to protein, it actually costs, let's say you take 100 calories of protein in, it costs about 30% of the calories that you consume just for your body to digest it because it has to break down the amino acids. That means it's leaving you with just 70 calories out of the 100 for protein. Mm -hmm. When it comes to carbohydrates, it takes about 10%. Okay, it's a lot more, your body's a lot more efficient at doing it, yeah. but that leaves you with more net calories. So 10% is going to leave you with 90 calories here. Okay? And that's from the carbs. When it comes to, to what did I spell there? When it comes to the fats that you take in, our body is incredibly efficient at using those fats. It doesn't take a lot of calories and work to break them down. It's almost zero. It's like 2%. Yeah. So you're about 98 out of every 100 of that is in those fat calories is being maintained. So in your case, though you might take in what you think is a 200 calorie surplus, you're actually netting out to a lot less because you're netting out 30% less of that. So 60 calories less. So a 200 calorie surplus for you, is it gonna actually wind up becoming about 140? Okay. Do you see that? Yeah. Because of the, just the digestion of the protein. So when you're trying to calculate your surpluses, guys, just be aware of the fact that if you're taking in additional protein as you should, then you're gonna probably be at, at a lower caloric surplus than you think you are. And that might change your numbers a little bit and in the results that you're seeing along the way. Now, how did I do this? The way I always advise people to do is if you're willing to give it more time. And again, I've been doing this for how many years now in front of everybody on this channel? Uh, Quite a while. Uh, no, no, I've been doing this probably on this channel for probably 14 years or 15 yeah. years. I've, I've gotten leaner over the years and I've gotten a little bit bigger, yeah. okay? And how I did it was it took me all that time, but I just prioritized protein. So I'm probably always sort of at a slight surplus. I don't measure anything anymore. I don't think I have, I don't have to at this point. Yeah. It's very much locked in. But at like a slight surplus, but because my caloric contribution is very high when it comes to protein, because I, I do take a protein shake every day, as I always advise people do, and like you did. Yep. By the way, a plug for Pro30G. Pro30G. Bill's, over... Bill's body is like Jesse yep. and available over at athenes.com. Yep. I'm getting some of that thermic effect that, that, that might have netted me just a little bit into a deficit, small amount, yeah. that over the period of a long period of time was able to lean, to, to lean out. And because of the additional muscle mass that I put on, again, ever so little, but over the years, more muscle tissue, more active meta metabolism, you're gonna get a little bit more of a deficit, yeah. right? Just because of the active tissue every day. And again, it's up to you. And the, ultimately, you understand the process now, and hopefully this makes it crystal clear, um, but the decision is up to you and to our reader here, yeah. our asker, you know, viewer, to see how much tolerance they have, how fast they want the gains, knowing that there is a cap to how much of those gains you can see because we still have to actually build the muscle. Yeah. And then work their way around that. And so you determine that for yourself. I will say, if you're looking for a way to eat how I recommend you eat that doesn't require all this crazy calculations, you can find my plate division method in the video that I'm gonna link for you right here. And it makes it really, really simple. And a big part of that is eating protein. And one of the best ways to do it is by taking a protein powder, Pro30G protein, 30 grams per serving, it's available over at athenx.com. If you found this video helpful, guys, make, leave your comments and thumbs up below. Also, if you haven't done so, click subscribe, turn on notifications, so don't miss a video when we put one out. All right, guys, see you soon.